Good morning, boys and girls. This morning, we're going to be talking about God's promises and that he's always keeps his promises, that he's a promise keeper. And we're going to hear from a man named Nehemiah that trusted God to keep his promises. And so I wanted us to start by singing a hymn we haven't sung in a while, but I think you'll remember it when you see the words. So sing it with me, Standing on the Promises. Standing on the promises of Christ my King, through eternal ages let his praises ring. Glory in the highest I will shout and sing. Standing on the promises of God, standing, standing, standing on the promises of God my Savior, standing, standing, I'm standing on the promises of God. Yes, boys and girls, we can always trust God. He always keeps his promises. So I wanted us to sing, Tis, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. And we haven't sang that in a while either, but I think you'll remember it. Sing with me. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. And the next thing I want us to sing is that little chorus, Trust and Obey. I know you know this. We're going to sing it twice and let's do the motions. You ready? Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Again, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Yes, boys and girls, we need to trust and obey God. He always keeps his promises, and he wants the best for us. He wants good things in our life. So let's um, see what he has to tell us of how Nehemiah trusted him and how faithful God was. And I want you to learn from this lesson how faithful he is to you and me as well. Our hands we fold, our head we bow as we talk to God just now. Dear God, thank you for your true word, the Bible. Thank you for all your promises we find in the Bible and that we know that we can trust you, that you will always keep your promises. Help us to be good listeners with our hearts as well as our ears, Lord, so that we can hear what you want to teach us today. And I ask all this in your name. Amen. Well, boys and girls, Nehemiah was a Jew. He was one of God's people. And God's people lived, you know, for many years they had been captured and lived in Babylon. But then King Cyrus um, let them go home. And so some of the people went back to Judah, but some of them stayed in uh, Babylon. And one of them that stayed was named Nehemiah, and he worked for the king of Persia. Well, one day some people from Judah came and Oh, Nehemiah was so excited to see them. I can have some news from all my friends and family that, ha that are in Judah. And so he said, how's everything going in Jerusalem? And they said, it's so sad. Things are not going well at all. Our people are in trouble. The walls around Jerusalem have been torn down and the gates have been burned. Well, when Nehemiah heard this, he sat down and cried. He was so sad for his people. But then he did what we all should always do. 
And that's what I want you to learn from this lesson today, that we need to stop and pray and talk to God when we have a concern. And that's exactly what Nehemiah did. He began to pray. And he prayed and he said, Yahweh God, it tells us this right here in the book of Nehemiah. He said, Yahweh God, let your eyes be open and your ears hear my prayer. He said, we have sinned against you. Please remember what your words to Moses were. If you are unfaithful, I will scatter you among the peoples. This is what God had told Moses to tell the people. But then God said, but if you return to me and obey me, I will gather you from the ends of the earth and bring you to the place I have chosen for you. And then Nehemiah said, please, Lord, hear my prayer. Well, Nehemiah went back in to serve in the king, which was his job. But you know, he was still so sad. And he, he was a little afraid because you weren't ever supposed to be sad in front of the king. That was a law. And uh, Nehemiah, the king spoke to Nehemiah and he said, he noticed that Nehemiah was very sad. And he said, what's the matter? What is troubling you? And Nehemiah told the king, the city where my ancestors, that means all of his people, uh, family and friends are living, is where I'm from, they're all in trouble. It's in ruin. The gates have been burned and the wall has been torn down so they have no security to keep them safe. Well, what do you want me to do, the king asked. Well, Nehemiah did what you and I need to do. And this is the second lesson about prayer we learn. First, we learn, remember, when he was so sad, he prayed and asked God for um, protection of the people and what to do. And now, secondly, then Nehemiah said, prayed before he answered the king's question. And he said, please send me to Jerusalem so I can rebuild the city. Well, not only did the king agree to send Nehemiah, but he also gave him wood to rebuild the city gates and the wall, and he even sent an army to protect Nehemiah. And he did one more thing that was very important. He sent letters along with Nehemiah saying he, the king, had given Nehemiah permission to travel so that he would be left alone alone, alone on, on the trip. No one would bother him. This is what God does for you and me too. When we pray and talk to him sincerely and ask his guidance and his direction and his help, he always answers way more than we've ever even asked him for. Well, Nehemiah arrived safely in Jerusalem, and he didn't tell anybody why he'd come. And after three days, he got up in the middle of the night and went to look at the city wall. He wanted to see everything for himself before he talked to the people. Sure enough, it was in ruins and the gates had been burned down. And so he went to the people and he said, come, let's build Jerusalem's wall. Well, Nehemiah told the people how God had helped him. And he told them everything the king had said and done and allowing him to come here to help them. And the people said, let's get started. They were trusting God. And that's the other lesson I want us to learn, that he always keeps his promises and he's trustworthy. That's why we sang that, trust and obey today. Well, Nehemiah trusted God's promise to give his people a home. And boys and girls, we need to trust God for even a greater promise of a greater home. If we confess our sins, Tell him, yes, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And ask him for his forgiveness. He's told us in 1 John 1, 9 that he will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And then if we say, then come into my heart, Lord. Come into my heart. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. He will come and live in our heart. But he's waiting at the door of your heart. 
He won't force his way in, but if we allow him in our hearts, he will come in in the form of the Holy Spirit and live and show us how, what we need to do and guide us. Just like Nehemiah spoke to him, we can talk to him every day through prayer. And then, boys and girls, he's promised us a home even greater than what uh, he was promising Nehemiah for his people. He has promised us a home forever and ever in heaven with Jesus if we've asked him into our heart. So I ask you today, have you asked Jesus to come into your heart? Have you asked him to forgive you of your sins? Well, if you haven't, today's the day to do that. Talk to mom and dad. Talk to Pastor Ron about what your next steps are. It's the greatest decision you'll ever make. Well, let's pray and have our popcorn praise. And one of the ways we want to pray him, praise him for today is that he's trustworthy. He's faithful. He's a promise keeper. We just got lots to praise him for. So let me hear you pop those praises off. Our hands we fold, our head we bow as we talk to God just now. Dear God, thank you for um, all that you do. But most of all, Lord, thank you that you love me enough to die to save me from my sins. You are a promise keeper. You are trustworthy. You are sovereign in control of everything. You are a sustainer, the glue that holds us together. You are a provider. You provided a way for us to be saved from our sins and to live with you forever and ever. You are our protector. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. You are worthy of all worship and praise. Lord, we could go on thanking you forever, but now we want to thank, pra thank praising you forever, but now we want to thank you for what you did when you died. sent your son Jesus and Jesus being willing to die for our sins. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son to die on Calvary's tree. From sin to set me free, someday he's coming back. What glory that will be, wonderful his love to me. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me. Thy great salvation, so rich and free. Amen. Well, boys and girls, I, I just want to ask you again before we close. Have you asked Jesus into your heart? If not, today's the day to do that. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Have a wonderful week. I love you, and God loves you even more.